All right, let's continue our discussion about wooden puzzles. Now, if you are a pediatric speech language pathologist, I am sure you own lots of these. <laughs> so let's talk about the progression in skills so that we can get kind of kids to this point. And if you're watching for some, and thinking about your kids that, you're, uh, that aren't quite here yet developmentally, you'll have some good ideas. Now, before now, like we talked about back in stage five, children should be doing uh, puzzles with say three or four pieces and maybe the bigger wood knobs. Here, children are able to do um, puzzles with more pieces as you can see but we also have the smaller knobs so let me give you just a couple little tips if you have kids that this is just too small for you can put some play-doh or some silly putty or anything like that on here and make this knob a little bigger I've actually had puzzles I don't have one here but let me grab this puzzle this is a new puzzle. I haven't opened it yet. But it's a Melissa and Doug chunky puzzle. And I think I got this at like Dollar General or somewhere. But when they don't have the pieces, if you can see that a child really needs the knobs, you can buy like cabinet knobs or something from Lowe's or Home Depot or even Amazon and glue those on there and make that easier for a child who would need that. If uh, And again, there's value in doing a puzzle without the knobs too. You know, just that children uh, need to get the, the piece in the correct slot. But again I like that that's just a quick tip if you uh, have a child that you're working with that you think you know boy he could really really use something to hold on to to help him get these pieces in the correct uh, spot now let's talk about our language goals and all the things you can do in therapy with puzzles now as we have discussed at length in this series every single child whether they talk on time or talk late vocabulary development is always a big big goal and puzzles really help us do that because we can target lots of different words in one activity that's really holding a child's attention and again we can uh, think about it in themes and sort of tell where our holes are with vocabulary development and so I I have puzzles to work on everything <laughs> but you do too I have some older ones that even I had themes like what we wear I have a bathroom puzzle I have some puzzles with food and not just uh, the ones that we kind of see in our plastic sets with some some uh, more uh, complex vocabulary here and so again even puzzles that have different motor expectations for children like this great Melissa and Doug farm puzzle that has doors that open and close and the magnets are on the back of the pieces so gosh they really stay in there don't they <laughs> and so again a great way to motivate children who again might have just some different interests and this this puzzle's great because any piece can go in any slot so a great idea for lots of our little friends who maybe get frustrated with getting uh, pieces all in the right places although that is the point of doing the puzzles it's really developing their visual matching skills and again that fine motor development and then we layer language on top of that you can also use puzzles that uh, have have tools and remember we talked about how tool use will continue to expand as a child moves through toddlerhood and so something like a fishing puzzle that a child uh, can use a fishing pole with and so lots and lots of fun uh, and lots and lots of uh, skill practice as we're doing puzzles there too all right so let's talk about some other things that we can do with puzzles I like to uh, use puzzles if a child will sit with me and do puzzle after puzzle that's great but a lot of times uh, I like to use puzzles with kids who need movement during therapy and it's just it's such an easy thing to set up. You put the, the puzzle board on one side of the room, usually you know opposite of where you want a child to be and then have them run, take a piece from you and usually at the beginning of the activity, and let's just get a puzzle with the pieces back here. You may hold the pieces in a bag. And if you've seen my work, you know I'm a big fan of two and a half gallon Ziploc bags because nearly every toy will fit in there. And so you hold the pieces and you know you have a child request the pieces. And you could even do it maybe even receptively. If a child is not there yet and isn't naming pieces and can't ask you for a piece yet, you can even do some receptive things with this. You know, where's the boat or find the helicopter. And so again, a child can can work on receptive language with puzzles too if he's not quite in the point. I uh, at the point of working on expressive language and really really naming. I like using receptive language with puzzles at the end of the activity for cleanup, and so that you are saying to a child, you've already named everything, you've already talked about it, he's ready to move on before. Or you do have him clean up the puzzle and have him uh, 
identify the pieces that way. And so you can say, oh, I'm going to tell you what to clean up. Let's get the zebra. Okay, great. Now find the lion. Let's clean up the lion. Oh, now's the, sta the snake. And so a different thing that you can do here for children who are working on two-step commands, sometimes their little friends can't always hold that information in their little working memory. And so that's why they can't follow two-step directions. And so we help them get there by adding another step. And so you can do this with puzzles. And so you... The the in-between step there that we need to add and so you ask them to find two different things so here with the puzzle you might say as you're cleaning up give me the zebra and the elephant or if you're holding out the bag or the basket or whatever container you're using to organize your play and have them clean up and you're gonna say oh we're gonna find two find the bird and the snake and so again I promise that idea works so well to help children move from holding one little piece or one little part of that command to helping them be able to move on to a two-step related command or just a two-step even unrelated command there uh, so great thing another thing that we can do with puzzles here at this stage is work on object functions and remember we said by the end of this stage that children would be able to do that and so you can work on those uh, with a puzzle and you might say something like um, uh, and, and you might even have multiple answers here you know which one says woo 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 or which one flies or which one goes in the water and again you could do it with a closed puzzle you know, which one goes on your head? What do you wear on your feet? What do you wear when it's cold outside? And so help children begin to do some of those object function things and puzzles are a great, great way to do that.